Okay, so as you can see, what we've done now, this is all totally dry, um, and it's nice because now we can handle it. We don't have to worry about any fingerprints, things like that. So what we can actually do now is get on with the actual um, deckling, and then we can take care of weathering and really bringing it all together. Now, the thing is, what I want to do now is just get this undercarriage on first. Now, if you've seen this um, before, you'll know that this actually screws in. It's a nice little touch, really nice, firm, positive fix to these. And with the wire inside these uh, undercarriage legs, it really does make it a strong fix. So what we've done, we've taken the wheels off. Now I've already painted the silver um, in here as well, just to really, you know, make it a bit easier. We haven't put the brake lines on yet, which we'll do in a moment. But for the moment, we just want to get these in. So we make sure this is all the way forward. And then take in um, your little parts here, which are the double A parts. Uh, if I give you the call out to these, which is double uh, A4 and double A5. Then what you can actually do, uh, what I do first, I just grab some tweezers. All these do is pop in here. It's going to be quite hard for you to see, I think. Um, it's just going to pop in here and then these slide in. So what we do is pop it in like that. Then we're just going to turn it around and push that down firm into position. And it has to counter out a little bit. And then if you take the little tiny black screw, which is this one, now your little screwdriver should be magnetic, pops in there. Okay, and then what we can do, we can screw this down. And what it'll do, it'll bite nice and positive. Don't overdo it just until it stops. And then we'll obviously put the magnet on the little flap that goes on the underside already. And then that will, if we get this right, and with the tweezers again, that will self stick itself on. If we could get it in. Making a bit of a hash of this one, admittedly. Okay, try again. <coughs> because the magnet sticks out just a little bit at the back. There we go, that's in. And the magnet then clips itself in, just like that, which gives us a very nice undercarriage, very, very firm, very stable. Now, if you wanted to put it on the stand, as we're gonna have this on the stand as well, um, and take it on and off. What you can actually do, unscrew that, take them out. You've got spare um, undercarriage legs, you've got spare tires, you could easily just unscrew them, put them in the up position, Click those back on because they're magnetic and away you go, job's done. So it's very simple. So we can just flip it over now, put it down, and we're totally not going to have to worry about putting it down, scratching up the undersides or anything else because we've got the tail one in um, as well, as you can see, which takes care of that. So we're very happy with those. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get some warm water out, some um, decal softeners, bits and pieces like that we're going to need. Okay, and so we've got a single decal thing. sheet here. We've got some warm water, literally, it's not hot, it's not cold, we're just warm water. Um, and we've got some uh, microsol. Now, I've got a couple of drops of microsol in the water, and that just helps it keep it all soft and moving around. So we'll just give it a, a bit of a swill round. Now, of all deckling, it's best to start somewhere where you're not going to have to hold. I always like to leave the fuselage um, because that is an area where you can just hold it for maneuvering it, and those will go on last. So, what we're going to do is flip this one over. We'll start on the underside. Side. okay so this one is going to go just down here which is number four on the sheet so if we just cut this out of the off the paper okay like so and then if you use some spring-loaded clamps quite handy always leave a little tab so you've got something to grab onto so you can just hold it on the side just like that into the water put it down upside down that way it stops it curling up on itself and all the rest of it okay we're going to take some of this water we've got here and we're just going to brush it in the area where we are, where the deck is going to sit. And this will just give it something to cushion down onto and it will allow the air to get out from underneath it. Okay, so we pull up our decal and we give it a bit of a move and hopefully, you can see there, it starts to slide quite freely. Now, if you're doing it in cold water, obviously it won't be quite as well. Now, this particular one, you'll be able to see on the close, it's got a little nick out of it and that is because of this little one down here. So it's quite easy to lay line this one up. The thing is with it, what we've actually got is obviously there's gun area and things which is going to make this one quite complex to sit down nicely. So what we're going to do is roughly sit this one over just like that. Come back with the water. Okay, and we're just going to get it in position. Now you might be able to see here, it's quite a bulge um, on this one and it's not sitting exactly perfectly but I'm not too worried about it at the moment because this is where the the setting solution is going to do its best. What we do we take a cotton bud and we're just going to get rid of the excess around the outside. I'm not going to go around like you'll see me do in a minute and push right over the top of the decal. We're just trying to get rid of the watermarks all around the outside. 
Okay, then what we're going to do, we're going to take our red micro sole, which is our setting solution. We'll just take the water off the brush. We use the big brush for this. Okay, and what we're going to do is generous amount right the way over the top. We're going to slip some underneath and push it underneath. I'm going to go right the way over the entire thing. And what this will do will actually physically soften the decal. It's actually going to melt it in a lot of ways. It will melt it on. It will make it sort of draw down into the panel lines and all those areas just like that. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get that one in. And what we're going to probably have to do is puncture sometimes little air holes to let them out um, because it's over a complex curve like this. So what we'll do, we'll just let that one dry a moment or start to dry at least, and then we can come around and put the other part on there, and obviously there's a red centre going to go in there, and things like that. So whilst that's doing that, if I show you a, a more simpler one on the top of the wing, which is one of these big ones, which are number, um, obviously one on your decal sheet. So we we'll just cut one of these off. We can show you a more standard type of decal going on. So what we do, we just grab this, that's number one. So obviously it's gonna go on the wing. There again, we've still got little lumps and bumps on here, but they're not as strong as the other one. Now the other thing is whilst it's soaking, when you're gonna go round, obviously when you look at the, the instructions, um, down in here you've actually got um, this is for all the stencil data what's a nice little touch start doing them and as you do them cross them off the sheet as you go round and that way you can go right the way around the entire model and put all those little stencil ones on they are very boring and lethargic to do but it really adds some nice little details to them so what we do we just have a go this one's not quite ready yet so what we can do we can get some of the water just out of the tub here in the general area where it's going to go, so we know it comes up to this panel line slightly, just like so. Up out of the water, okay, lay it roughly in the area it's going to go and we slide it off. Okay, then what we're going to do is look at the instructions to see how actually how it goes, where it runs up to, which panel lines it goes to um, or backs up to. So what we're going to do, this one comes right the way forward. And what you should be able to do is just nudge it forward, just like so. So we just check the panel lines. We know it goes right up to the end here and sits just like that. Come along with our cotton bud. And what we can do is just very lightly just walk out a lot of the water underneath. And as soon as we get rid of a lot of the water, it will stick in place and stop moving. So we just need to pop that just down a little bit. And then we can just push the water out, starting from the middle and rolling out, turn the cotton bud over, okay then as soon as it starts to bite down quite nicely we can be a little bit more firm with it, as you can see every pass you do you get a little bit more water come out. So we're on like that, same thing again as we did for the other side, we take the micro sole, and come up to it and we're just going to brush this right the way over the entire decal itself. Now if you get this type of situation where it's running, pulling up, just give it a bit of a scrub and you'll find that it'll stick down very, very nicely. And just brush from the middle to the outsides just like so. So what we do, I'm going to carry on wherever else and we'll come back a bit in a moment to show you about that two-part decal. Okay, so we've got on with pretty much of the deckling on here. No problems at all. The only thing I did find was um, some of the um, sky colour, which is that sort of egg um, yeah, uh, greeny colour did crack up so um, it might have just been obviously my one I'm not going to go around and assuming that they're all going to do it and fall apart <clears throat> but certainly I did have some trouble with the lettering which I'll show you in a moment so what we're doing at the moment we're just soaking some of the parts now these are on here as you can see down here on the close-up now <clears throat> to be honest they weren't exactly the most uh, easiest ones to get on because this to conform it was a bit of a nightmare so that literally just had every 10-15 minutes another soak of the actual um, in this case micro sole but you could use anybody's decal softener and what that does is literally just makes it really soft and it gets heavy and it stretches and because it stretches it conforms a lot easier it's one of those things when they shrivel up and wrinkle up and look a right mess that means it's working and is good just don't touch it is the clue you know obviously if you touch it what's going to happen is it'll actually start to um, tear or rip or stretch 
So what we've got here um, on the close-up, we've got this little one here, which is basically just a, a cover over for this one um, and to make it look nice. Now what you could do, in all honesty, is just pop around here with a little bit of royal blue and a little bit of white. I'm only really doing this one to show you. Um, that would be my preferred way of doing it. You could do it a lot quicker and a lot you know, faster than actually using a decal. But what happens is that one goes on just like that. We're just going to squish this down a little bit just to get any water out around it. And then the same thing is we're going to come along with our decal setter or softener. Um, as I say, we describe it as decal setter and softener. It's really the same thing. So what we're going to do is just get this roughly in the right place. And the little thing here is I've actually got silver paint on this brush which isn't the best thing. So what you would do now, you would let that just literally, same things you did with the others, conform, soften up, hang. And if all you're gonna do, if you get any little bubbles in there, just give them a prick with a knife or with a pin just to take care of those. So what we've got here is the red center roundel, which I just put on here, That'd be a bit better. So what we'll do, we use this other nice cleaning brush. So what we're gonna do, grab some decal setter. And we're just going to give this a tap on the top again and we're just going to place it right the way over okay and then this round all is going to sit very very central right over that hole okay now exactly the same thing is going to happen this is just going to sit right on the top there let's move that out of the way i'll just use some scissors here just to get this to sit in the right position like that now at the moment it's slightly hovering uh, right above and I know because you're coming in at a slight angle it looks like it's a bit skew width but honestly it's not it's okay as is so what we're going to do is give it a little tap down when we're happy just like that going to come in with a softener right the way over the top exactly the same okay I'm just going to let it sit and go down and away we this go. one is all totally done very happy with the way it's all turned out I've got no problems with any it's just literally just down the back here we had a little bit of cracking um, on the um, decal which you can't really see here on even on the close-up now we're taking care of it but the J gave us a little bit of a heart attack because it actually just fractured in about four places but there again no problems at all just whip around with a knife um, along the panel lines just to take care of those another coat as well and it just makes those panel lines all come back together as I say just take your time with it working up working up the other thing I did which I normally don't do but you know in the showing you really um, is that these front yellow ones here on the wings are actually um, the decals normally I would mask and spray that and away we go but I decided to just see how good they are put one on completely let it dry come back and then put the other half because what happens is they are the fronts and the underside and then all that happens is we can find somewhere to grab uh, all that happens is obviously the underside here on the close-up becomes this one and the top one let it totally dry and then just tap it round with the softener when it's still soft and that will actually just blend the two together and we get it the thing is i haven't put the red gun covers on yet so what i'm going to do is put some smoke stains on and then i'm going to put them on so it looks like it's obviously on the ground and just about to use its guns what i'm going to do now let this totally dry off give it a coat of future to lock it all down two coats of future we're going to leave it overnight come back in the morning give it a wash and start on the weathering Okay, so the future is totally dry on there. So if you used any other type of gloss, now if you've used an enamel gloss or something like that, you know, I would give it a couple of days, at least three or four days to totally go off, sometimes a week. If you've got the time, the longer you can leave it, the absolute better. The trouble is if you can use any type of wash, if the surface it's going onto is remotely sort of not 100% cured and gone hard, what's gonna happen is the wash is actually gonna stick to it. So it doesn't matter if you're gonna be using something like this, like the Pro Modeler's wash, or anybody else's type of wash you're gonna use, you're gonna have the same trouble. So what I did, these guns aren't fixed in, we're just going to whip those off for the minute so we don't end up pulling them off. Tails are off as well. So because we're going to be going over the camo on the top, we're going to use the black wash. Now what's going to happen is, it's going to be part of the weathering. If you're going to use this as quite a clean look, you might be better off using the dark dirt wash purely because it will show up on the greys and on the greens and on the undersides, no problem. But because I'm going to do a little bit more weathering around this and some dirt streaks and things like that, I need it really to show through quite strong. So what we do, we'll just grab a brush, we'll just give it a clean and a bit of clean water, make sure there's no nasties on the brush. Okay, then all we're going to do, we're just going to grab some of the black wash, just like this, okay, 
So I'm just going to give it a good old rub round absolutely everywhere. Now I'm not going to bore you to death by showing you how to do this because obviously there's lots of videos all over the site and things that are going to show how to use the wash and things like that. So if I just do this wing quickly and then you can join me at the end. But there we go, that's the, the black wash on. Now if you notice it's a little bit gritty and things like that, then just give it a good old rub all the way around that. It has bubbled up a bit um, and obviously that's just the, the greasing agent which is just helping it all flow into all the actual areas. But what you want to do is totally let that dry off. So give it a couple of hours if you want to. You can leave it on overnight, something like that. You can leave it on really indefinitely. It won't harm it. Then just come back and then we'll get it off. Okay, so this has been drying for the last hour. Um, we've still got a little few little wet bits. Obviously, I did the in undersides of inside the cowlings like this and close up. Um, so they're a bit wet on the underside. So we're just going to move all of those little bits out of the way. Just over like that. So you can see a bit clearly what we're doing here. Now, obviously, you've seen this a million times before, but if you haven't, I'll have a quick run through. Totally dry. Um, it all looks a little bit gritty and a bit grainy. Now, if you've used a wash and you're thinking, oh, it's gone a bit fun, it's a bit gritty, gr grainy. All that's happening is, obviously, it's clay. It's going back to its base state. When it gets cold, um, it tries to revert back to being a solid. That's where you get it. But as soon as you give this a, a bit of a rub round, when it's dry, as you might be able to see on the close-up here, it actually, um, bring you a little bit, it actually starts to sort of smudge and flow, this type of thing like this. And this is what you want, because what you're doing, actually rubbing it into the panel lines. So when you're putting it on, originally, um, it obviously flows down the panel lines, it makes it quite deep. But if you just come along like this, and because we've gone over a couple of coats of gloss, let me just show you in here, as you can see, all those lovely markings stand out absolutely perfect. Now underneath here, this is a mix of, of um, the light dirt and a bit of black as well, because I just wanted to give it a more overall sort of grimy look. Now obviously if you watch the video, I talk about obviously putting it over a flat coat to get a more real dirty look versus uh, a clean look and things like that. So obviously if you want to get a few, a few more details of that, pop on the website, or if you've got this on obviously the DVD, it'll be attached to the DVD as well and shows you how to do it. But there you go, you can see it working there. So if we show you more of a business end up here on the camo, exactly the same way, wet it first and get it all moving and things. And as you can see, um, I don't know if you remember at the very beginning of this, I said about, obviously I was concerned about um, the riveting detail not showing through about, uh, we'll be overcoating it. I don't know if the close up's gonna be able to pick this up. No, it's not gonna quite get it, I don't think. But if you can, you can see this riveting detail is all here. We never did lose it, which is quite a nice little touch. Okay, so that's the wash off. Um, and what we've done is we've given this a flat coat just over it, just to sort of make it all a, a little bit neater. Um, and make it more handleable as well. So as you can probably see on the close-up, as you see, we get nice panel line detail, no problem at all. And then obviously we've got it on the, the wings uh, and down in the, the fuselage sections and that. Now the thing is, it was a little bit, um, couldn't really see it, so I added a little bit more black than uh, normal. So what it had was the standard sort of grey wash everywhere mixed with a little bit of black, and then I went re-over it again with just the black wash, just to really bring it out, because you couldn't really see it that well. Okay, so moving on now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some little um, gun stains um, moving back, because what we can do then, we can put the actual decals to cover them up. So it looks like obviously it's been landed, repaired, and obviously it has the guards which stop all the nasties going down inside the gun barrels um, when they were on the ground. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take the airbrush, and then we just get some thinners in the pot, that one's out. Let's just grab some of these, a bit of thinners. Okay, and then we're just taking the standard flat black, nothing exciting. Okay, and we're doing a, probably a more like a uh, 20 to 80 mix uh, on this. The reason for doing it quite a, a thin mix like this is obviously we need it to sort of be more of a stain of a smoky mark than it is actually uh, anything else because obviously it's just a smoke stain running back off of the gun. So all we're going to do is just grab a bit of tissue just here, check our flow, check the happy, quite a high air pressure, and all we're going to do is light flicky movements. So what we'll do, we we'll just pop this below, nothing else, it'll just stop it covering the mat. So all we're going to do just on like that, drying it back, 
and you can probably see that on the close up a little bit better. So we just do this one as well. Just running back a little bit off of the camera, but nothing particularly much. And I don't want to go overboard with these because obviously, you know, it's just a, a, a an effect, if you like, or a little touch. So we're going to go with a little bit on the underside as well. And then the shell casing, ejectors, just the same thing. So we just do the same on the other side. And what we do is walk them back a little bit more. Just like that. On this cannon again. Just like so. And we just do the underside here. What we do is just give a little bit of grime in these flaps. So using the same branch, a little bit in the wheel wells. Okay, and there we go. I'm going to leave it literally just like that, which is quite grimy, dirty for those areas. And as I say, we've got the, the gum ones on there. Then obviously what we're going to do, we're going to put the red decals on those to take care of them. So if we just move that out of the way. Obviously we can do a similar one for the, the smoke from the engine area. As I say, I'm going to keep this somewhat clean-ish, I suppose. I'm not going to say it's going to be totally clean. But what we're going to do, same thing for the guns. Uh, what we do is just move the camera out a little bit, just so you can see this a bit better. So what we're going to do, hold it exactly as it would. Um, exactly as it would be. Okay, and then we're just going to spray a little bit and just dry it down. Then all we'll do, we're just gonna get it and just a bit of a curve round. And then obviously we can do the same on this one. Okay, so there we go. We've moved on a little bit. Now what have I actually done? Okay, glass work is obviously put in. That was just put in with a tiny bit of gator glue. Tiniest drop, literally drop in, drop in, and away we go. So that's that done. Gun barrels we've put on and we painted them with some gun metal on the tips of. Now these aren't fixed, there's a deliberate reason um, is that obviously I'll be taking this to shows and things like that. It's one of those areas just like to get knocked off so it's easy to have them as a loose fit. Now underneath we've actually installed the flaps, very straightforward, they just slot in so there's no real problem with that. Um, we've installed um, little aerials underneath here and things like that. We've also attached the brake lines which are rubber, just a drop of super glue. There again, all very, very straightforward. All we've got to do now is obviously put a little bit of glass work in under here and paint that orange, and that bit's done. Um, moving on the top, the actual flap activators um, at the, on the sides here, they're actually on and done, very straightforward, just together, and then drop them in with a bit of super glue. Coloured light up on the rear here, that's done. Obviously we've installed an aerial as well on the top, and we've got a little light at the front. Now obviously you can put your pilot figure in now, that's what we're going to do with this one now, um, and he'll, he'll go just in there. And away we go. So that's very straightforward. No real problems with any of these parts going on. Just basically following the instructions, following through. Very, very clear. And it all works at the end of the day. Just put the front end on. I, I will start with the top cowl first and push that down. Make sure it's equally on both sides. And then back in. And then obviously we just come along. And you can either have the engine exposed or closed up. So if we just clip this in. And once that's in, clipped backwards, we'll leave the other engine off. You can put the front in, which is say the prop covers all that cowling work up. And once that's in, it's a very, very nice fit. We just need to sit it all back in there. And there we go. It's actually very, very nice. You know, you can't fault any of the engineering. Okay, there we go. Perfect. She's all done. What a fantastic build. I have to say, I can honestly say this hand on my heart. This is the first time I've actually built this kit and it is the best 132nd scale kit I have built 
of anything whatsoever. I was a massive fan of Tamiya before, and I love Tamiya's F16s, the 148 and the 132 kits, because I maintained that they were the best kits to date. Well, this has now beaten it, because this is the best kit to date. Fantastic work having an engine, especially it can be shown. Little new things with this kit. Um, you know, the, having the cowling parts here so thin uh, is unbelievable. They are literally paper thin, which is very, very nice. Um, and it, it gives you that sense of scale being in this front area. Normally you'd have big thick panels and it just doesn't look right when you take them off. But this is a new thing um, and it's great. New to me, using magnets to actually click in these parts all in together. Obviously we built the magnets into the engine, which hold all these panels in, which is another lovely, lovely little touch. The cockpit. Fantastic. The detail and the amount of effort and time that goes into that cockpit is definitely rewarded. Um, on here we've got it so we can be seen. Um, that was actually here um, on the close-up that we can see down in there. You can see all those details. A lot of people say, what's the point? You can't actually see it. Well, this one you can. You can actually get your head down there and have a good look and see it all. Now, the nice touches, obviously the undercarriage on this particular one. Um, we did it and uh, rubber tires again, but the way it all screws together and it's extremely extremely well done So another big um, kudos there to uh, Tamiya for taking the time of doing it things like that Problems with the kit none whatsoever if there's a problem with this kit It's all my fault when I've been building it and it'll be your fault Just take your time with those seams um, when you're actually going along and uh, taking off the uh, sprue pegs Don't overdo it because if you overdo it You can need a little bit of filler if you do it to exactly how it can cut them off and smooth them down you'll be fine one area to look out for is obviously joining the wing to the fuselage this line down here just take your time with it a little bit of glue don't over flood it with glue and end up pulling it around too much set it in position a little bit of liquid cement if you've got it run it down that line and away you go things we were worried about obviously was the riveting detail of it being lost well I can honestly say I can see every rivet here and that's not just I think good spraying on my part I think that's in general that that riveting detail which I really thought before I started this I was going to lose is all still here and it is absolutely beautiful to see it it's been a fantastic kit really really nicely engineered the instructions are very very simple and very very easy to follow I hope you enjoyed the build and if you have join me again next time Thank <laughs> you.